is making a super collider really worth it? Can it lead to a disaster like nuclear power plants? Well, super colliders aren't dangerous the way nuclear power plants can potentially be dangerous. I mean, we've had some accidents in the past when it comes to nuclear power plants. We've had the Seven Mile Island uh, accident in the United States. Uh, we had the Chernobyl disaster, which uh, probably is the worst uh, accident a nuclear accident till date then you had fukushima because of the uh, 19 uh, because of the 2011 earthquake and so on there may have been other such other smaller instances as well accidents as well so there is a certain uh, pro possibility or probability of of nuclear radiation leaking out or whatever in a nuclear reactor and as long as the right precautions are taken nothing happens hopefully now when it comes to uh, Colliders or super colliders, there's no nuclear radiation involved in these. Colliders are simply gigantic vacuum tubes with tremendously strong magnets around them that accelerate particles uh, to almost the speed of light and then they accelerate two beams of particles in different directions, opposite directions, and eventually collide them in a collision chamber with a whole array of instruments around them. And then you want to see what comes out of the debris of the collision, the, the, the gigantic smash up. And hopefully you discover new particles because the energy of the two beams is so incredibly high that the that it may end up creating particles that we haven't discovered uh, or observed before. So that's what a super collider does. And there is no uh, danger of it creating uh, some kind of nuclear uh, accident because there's no nuclear radiation involved at all. Uh, one of the dangers that people spoke about before the LHC became operational, I remember in the 1990s, I had written, I had written an article about this, defending the LHC. So there was this uh, group of scientists who was petitioning that the LHC should not be made operational because um, because there was a view that that. Um, the, at the time, the possibility was being uh, explored that the LHC would be able to create mini black holes, maybe one per second, one mini black hole per second, micro black hole per second, uh, in uh, uh, because of its co because of its collisions. And then the danger was that what if these black holes start absorbing? They they touch the walls of the of the of the collider, and this they, they just gobble up the Earth, and the Earth would cease to exist. That was a danger, right? And uh, I remember in what, 1910, what, not 19, so I'm not sorry, I'm not that old. <laughs> 2010 or something, 20, 2008, 2009 or something, I had written, written an article about this and I demonstrated that it is impossible for that to happen. I'll not get into that. Now, the, the, let's come to the question, okay? So, is making a super collider really worth it? So, a super collider, what you call a super collider has to be something that has a, greater energy of its beams, of its collision beams, of the colliding particles than the LHC. Maybe an order of, I don't know, 10, 100 more, times more or something like that. Uh, so why would you do it? So let's examine the pros and cons of creating a super collider. So if you have a super collider, which is way more powerful than the large hadron collider, then you can explore higher energy scales. A more powerful collider can probe higher energy scales, which can potentially discover new particles or, or new phenomena beyond the standard model. And that is what we hope for. You know, we have a standard model, but we want to discover, we want to go beyond that. So a super collider could potentially, possibly discover new particles and phenomena. And it, it even if it doesn't discover new phenomena or new particles, it will definitely provide more precise measurements of known particles and known interactions, including the newly discovered Higgs boson. It's still newly discovered, right? Um, so even if nothing new is discovered, it will definitely give us more precise measurements of known particles and interactions. And it will help us understand the Higgs boson and other such particles better. And obviously, if uh, you develop such a machine, it will lead to various kinds of innovations in accelerator technology, superconducting magnets, detector systems, and so on and so forth. So technological and engineering advancements, which is not something that you really want. You want actually, uh, you actually want, if you're building a super collider, you want to make fundamental progress in physics and fundamental discoveries, new discoveries. So these are the pros 
of creating, of, of building a super collider? What are the drawbacks? What are the cons? So the most obvious con is the cost. So the Large Hadron Collider is probably the most expensive instrument or machine ever built. And building a new, more powerful collider would be incredibly expensive, extremely expensive. And that, ex that expenditure will definitely divert resources away from other scientific endeavors. So that's, that's a big drawback. Then secondly, there's no guarantee that this new collider would make any groundbreaking discoveries because we have no idea. We don't know for certain what exists at higher energy scales. We're just probing in the dark like, like, blind, like blind people. We have no idea what exists at higher energy scales. So there is absolutely no guarantee that this new collider will make any kind of groundbreaking discoveries. I mean, the, the Large Hadron Collider was supposed to discover all kinds of things, supersymmetric particles and whatnot, micro black holes, nothing. The only new thing it discovered was the Higgs boson, nothing else. So th from that perspective, it's it's been kind of uh, disappointing. Okay, uh, so there's that. So there's no guarantee of any new discovery. And then your new collider will require tremendous amounts of energy to operate the large hadron collider it it's its energy bill is i think equal to that of a small country okay just one instrument imagine you have a super lhc or a super collider it's going to be the energy equivalent of of a medium sized country perhaps imagine that right so where does that energy come from you're going to have to provide more energy, you know, generate more energy. How do you generate more energy? Europe is already facing an energy crunch. What are you going to do? You know, you're going to burn coal. They already shut down the nuclear reactors in Germany and what, wherever else. So there's environmental concerns and all that. If you have to burn coal to do that, or then or maybe you have to get the energy by burning gas and you get it from Russia. That is taboo right now. And we'll not talk about geopolitics right now, but there you have it, right? And so on. So. Overall, I would say that because there is no guarantee of any new discovery and because uh, of the incredible costs involved in, in building the collider and then operating the collider, overall, I think it's not a great idea. I, if you have that much money to throw around, why not fund other experiments and fund other research? You know, there's so much research that needs to be done in so many different fields. So I, I would say you'd rather, I would, if, if, I were to make the decision, if I had the funding, I would not build a new collider. I would maybe build a few telescopes on the moon or I would I would fund other scientific research. There's so much more that needs to be funded. So that's that's how I see it.